Okay, today's story, friends, I promised you. I just read it now, I never heard the story before. And I want to share it with you. So there's this uh, the booklet that was published in honor of somebody's wedding. The Hussein himself. His name is Goldschmidt. Zayde, El Zayde was Rav Nochem Goldschmidt. Celebrated Chassid, one of the pioneers in Afatas and Mayonis, bring, bringing Chassidus in, to, to, in the Kibbutzim, etc., in the very early days. So he, this, this, he's an Israeli boy, so as a Bocher, he was one of the fellows, was a rotational, whole rotation, that the Chisoldik Bochem came to learn this in 74 years, called the Kvutza, which means the group, by rotation, they would be eating by the Biel Friday night. I don't know, Shabbos Day probably not. Yeah, Shabbos Day too, in the later years. The last 25 years. Um, by his table. So he, in honor of his wedding, like many, gave out a booklet, book of the things that they heard by the Biel's table. So here's a story, which to me, I know it's, as you'll hear, I think it's, My intent is to translate it and to send it to some Chabad publications that they should publicize it. I think it needs to be publicized. Here's the story. So Rabiel, Rabiel Khan we're talking about, right? Rabiel relates this. We went yeshiva. So the Benahel, the director of the yeshiva was Rabiel Yezek Karasik. Now, Ashgach HaPrati, this Rabiel Yezek Karasik, learned he was one of the Talmudim of Rabi Shilem. He was a famous chassid. I'm going to show you a picture of a very beautiful face. And uh, he was one of the pioneers of Chabad in Yisrael. He was the Rav of Tel Aviv. And he was one of the founders, pioneers in establishing Kvah Chabad and all of the Chabad infrastructure. This wonderful chassid was at the center of. Uh, he has fa- he's a patriarch of a very famous family, uh, the Ashkenazi family. His grandson was the Gerdov of Kachabad. Because his son-in-law was a Moshe Ashkenazi, the Rabbi of Tel Aviv, who succeeded Rabbi Eliezer and the Blazer Karasik, as he was called, the Blazer. And when he passed away, so the Ashkenazi illustrious family in Shluchim all over the world, and the whole Goinim and, and uh, big Rabbanim and writers and Mashbiim, these are his grandchildren, the whole Chitrik dynasty uh, are his grandchildren. Here's Shulchitik, those who know him, his wife was his daughter. This is Rabbi Rablaze Karasik. So he, this is, friends, this is through the late 40s. Abiel is, is a teen. And here's the story. So this is uh, Karasik, the Blazer. Was the menahel the Rosh Hashiva the Yeshiv story? So he used to test us on rare occasions. He would test us in our learning. He didn't like to test a whole, the whole class together, but two or three bacher he would uh, test them. So he says once me and my friend of Noska Garari. Now Noska Garari, by the way. His father was Rav Meshka Garari, the famous masculine, one of the greatest thinkers in Lubavitch, in our history probably, and Rabia was a, a disciple of his. This Rav Noske, too many people, I don't want to confuse you, but Rav Motche, Shizgar remembers him well, he lived here in Montreal. He was a businessman, he was an insurance salesman, I don't know what he was, but he was a, a very big masculine, spent his... Shabbos davening in deep in thought. Much of it was in contemplation. The, the older Bachrim here in Yeshiva used to go to his house where Bach was able to. The senior Bachrim had already learned many, many years chassidus for a private shiv of Naska Gerari. And uh, so he's a friend of Rabbi Yoel. Now, remind me, I don't want to get confused with too many details, but I, Shabbos, remind me. Shabbos by the Fabrengi, the Mitzvah Shem, after davening, I want to tell you a personal story with him that I encountered him once in the Shabbos coming back from a Fabrengen and what he asked me and what I answered and what he said to me. That's a Nuska Gerari. Let's not get confused. Back to the story here. 
So the story is, Abiel is a kid, and this Abnoska is one of his friends. And they're being tested now by Ablazer. Now there's another book of a third boy, part of this, were being tested. He said two or three, it was three boys. Now, Abiel doesn't say the name of this boy for the obvious reason he listen to the story. So they're being fired, being tested on the Gemara. They were learning Gemara Gitten then, tractate Gitten. So Abiel says that the Belezer tested us, and I in Abnoska, he saw that we, in general, knew the material. They're both geniuses. I'm sure they knew it very well. And the third boy didn't know anything. So Rablaza asks him, here, there are different places in the Gemara that they would, that they had covered, and he, the boy, he didn't know what to respond. So Rablaza said to him, that you don't know the material, no, he said, so maybe, I don't know, your teacher, there'll be some uh, ramifications of that. Maybe have a good explanation, I don't know. But I have to know, he says to him, whether you're going up to the end of the year to the next class. I just have to know, you know, where you're holding. So you don't know this material, you don't know it. Tell me anything, any subject that you want, and I'll, I'll ask you uh, on that. You choose what I should ask you. I just want to see you. So the Bokhe says to him, the part of the Gemara talks about how may we get Bashayyara. Now, friends, I need to explain what's going on here. May we get Bashayyara, the Gemara is talking about if, a, if, if a, a guest is found, it's lost, it's someone's fell out of someone's possession. But it's 100 percent kosher get, and it's written there. Looks everything is fine. So can that get be used then? Used. There's a name there of a husband and a wife, can it be used? Why not? So the mother discusses there, if the get is found along a route where there are many caravans travel, there's a lot of travel, there's the possibility that there, somebody else is divorcing his wife, happens to have the same name, and the wife has the same name, and this get was written for that couple. And the get has to be written with the intent of for who the couple is. So the names are right, but it's the wrong couple. So if there's a lot of travel, it's a possibility that they can have a couple bearing the same names and then that could happen. So the Gemara discusses, you know, whether we can assume, you know, again, it's a, a pr probability and possibility and all kinds of other factors. Can we assume that the get is a good get and if it's given to she divorced or not divorced? The, the woman X. So the, so, so the Gemara, the language of the Gemara is, Shayara. Now, Shayara means, in the language of the Gemara, it means a caravan route. But in modern Hebrew, Sharia, not in the same word, but sounds the same word, means to soak. Soak. On Pesach, matzah shruya is gibrox. You know, are you allowed to dip your matzah in liquid or not? The different customs people do, don't. The word is shruya. So this boy, is my thought that he said, well, test me on this. You know, I may be get b'shayyara. And he started to explain, you find a get that is soaked. I don't know what he was thinking, you know, can you read it or not? Is it a kosher get, not a kosher get? It's been, you know, fell into, a, into, a, into, a, into water or, or rain fell on it. So Rabiel says that me and Oscar started laughing. It's funny. We couldn't contain ourselves, he says, and we, we were laughing. Rabbi Lazer saw this. He turns to us and he says, not only did you not help him in the test and hint to him the answer when I wasn't paying attention, it seems that while he was asking the questions, he just, you know, he became busy with papers or whatever, and the Blazer was doing that, that the Biel or, or Noske should tell the boy the answer, not to embarrass him. So not only did you not give him the answers, you're laughing. And then a blazer can lecture them for a long time about friendship and loyalty that has to be amongst the Talmudim, Chassidim, Eden. Abiel says, 
till this day, and he's telling his story 60 years later, 70 years later, 70 years later, more than 70 years later. And it was a very good shear. It was a very, very good shear. And he concluded to the boy sitting around his table. He says, you have to know what you learn. You have to know the material. You have to understand it very well. But the test of friendship and loyalty is even more important. End the story. He may add to this and say that what is the whole objective? Aviel, of course, is the great teacher of Hasidus. Hasidus. What's the whole objective of teaching Hasidus? Torah. Bechlal, but certainly Chesidus, if not to engender humility, love, empathy, and oneness. If that's not what it's bringing to, that's the test, the ultimate test. I hope, I assume that you agree with me how important the story is, and the important, and what I want to get the story out is for both students and teachers. For the student that is struggling with, with the academic material to know, yes, it's all very important to know and say, no, do your best. But that's not what Hashem wants at the end of the day. That itself is a means. It's neshama connection. It's achtos and ava and loyalty and sensitivity and empathy. And likewise, all teachers in Rosh Hashiva should know you're building a school and the kids should get good marks and you want to produce scholars and whatever, you know, there's a competition, uh, which, which school produces the, be the best grades. All very important, but not the ultimate. What you want your child, your student, that has to be articulated and clear as the way the teacher teaches. It's a, it, it, it's a whole different way of teaching. It's a whole different attitude in the classroom. It's the neshama you want to reveal in the child. And that goes beyond the academics and the learning, the understanding. And the manifestation of that neshama is the oneness and the love and the achtos and the achva that will be, needs to be cultivated amongst the children from the very earliest age. What a beautiful story. Spread the word, friends. You remember the players, you can hear the story again. We're talking about Biel, the place of Karasik. Beautiful story. Have a wonderful day. And remind me, Shabbos by the Fabrengen, to tell you about my brief exchange with Abiel's friend, the other boy in the story, who laughed and learned his lesson um, one day coming back from a Fabrengen many years ago. Good job, it's a wonderful day.